Yes, good evening, uh, my fellow brothers in Christ, the men of Mount Zion Fellowship Church. Uh, tonight we continue with our study of uh, um, the duty of men in the church. And um, tonight we will start on that paper too, which is the older men's duty to raise up younger men in other words what the, we are saying that the the older men they have a responsibility to model the growing up of the younger men that are coming after them and the first point we're going to discuss tonight is he said repeatedly and forcefully the bible gives directions with regard to multi-generational fellowship and ministry the last analysis arrived at the conclusion of older men having the duty to model godliness for the younger men and the younger men having the duty to give respect, to remain humble and to honor the older men. <clears throat> now, what the Bible is saying is that there are so many examples of multi-generational fellowship in the ministry. First of all, the, where did the Bible uh, uh, mention about the children ministry? If you remember, the mothers brought their children to Jesus and the disciples you know, tried to, to sort of push them back. But Jesus Christ rebuked them. He then carried one of the children on his lap. He said, suffer not the children to come unto me, for there is the kingdom of heaven. And he told, turned it to his disciples. He said, anybody that wants to enter the kingdom of heaven must be like these children. So, so, that, so that Jesus Christ is telling us that his ministry also involves the children. It's not only for the adults at all. It's also involved the children. And also in the Bible too, we read about the, 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 the youths and the young adults. Because <clears throat> the, the, uh, when uh, the, the complaint came, uh, during the Jerusalem Council, the, the, the apostles or the disciples, they said, let us appoint young, young men of integrity, men that could be trusted, men that are trustworthy, and so, so that they, they can be responsible to attend to the welfare, to the need of the people, especially the widows. And the people, they are they, they are they anointed, they lay hands upon them, are not married men, they are not adults, they are young people like Stephen, like Stephen, like a age group of uh, Timothy, a later day. So, so, so that Stephen and the rest, they were the first seven disciples that, that uh, they lay hands upon to, to look after the widows because they were trustworthy. So, 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 so that there are jobs, there are opportunity for, for young adults in the, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and even the youths too in the Old Testament, because if you remember that, um, um, Samuel was was brought to prophet Eli when he when he was a uh, when he was about five years that is after the mother has win him and after winning him he would probably be about five years of age when when Samuel he was brought to the to the house of a uh, prophet Eli and and there he was living with the children of a uh, prophet Eli uh, who, who, who who were unruly who were unholy to God. So that's why there were different different examples of uh, of uh, of uh, children's life, young adults' life in the in the Bible. So it's a multi generational uh, um, um, fellowship all all over, and then then that now comes to the men, and the men uh, and obviously the men, the disciples, Paul, Barnabas, all of them, they are all the men. So 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 that the Bible is teaching us that. The, the men must be a, a, a role model for the for the younger men and for the younger people and because because they, they, they look upon us we must be able to live a godly life we must be able to make sure that they emulate us as we read in first Timothy 5 1 he said in that same said do not rebuke an older man but exhort him as a father younger men as brothers he said no matter how much Older men may 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 fault may may, may falter. 
that you as a young man must not rebuke him rashly. Obviously, there must be a way to correct an old man because you cannot assume that because he's an old man, he can never do wrong. No, he can do wrong. But the way you, you rebuke him with love, by calling him, by, by, by appealing to him, and, and because he wants to protect his own integrity too, he will admit his fault, and, and, and that, that is the way. And older men also must be able to, 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 to treat the younger men as brothers. You cannot say because you are an old man uh, or you are a senior uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and that you are in, a, in a, a, a privileged position, then, then you are rude to your younger people, you are rude to the younger people. Because one thing you have to understand is that respect, and you don't command respect, you earn respect. If you want to be respect, respect the younger people and they will respect you in turn. And also, those are in Titus 2, yeah, uh, chapter uh, verse 2, he said that the older men must be sober, they must be reverent, they must be temperate, they must be sound in faith, in love, in patience. So, in other words, older men, you, can, you, 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 you cannot be reckless and you cannot be lawless, you have to be sober. If it is when you are sober that you are respected, if you are reverent, you, you, you are living a godly life, temperate, you are. You have to be to be patient. You have to humble yourself, and then to be sound in faith, and then in love too. So, so when when when, when you exhibit that kind of character, it is very very definite that the younger people will see the goodness in you, and copy you and respect you. So that is what the 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 the, the, the writer is saying here, and then also it addresses also the younger men to respect the older men, and that is. So uh, how does the, the younger man respect the older man? That is what the, uh, the, the author is saying here. To be rude to uh, elders, not to be, uh, not, 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 not to, to be pompous, not to assume that he knows too much and all this is. So that was what Apostle Paul did. He said that uh, the, the younger men, whether, whether you are in a position of, of authority in the church, whether you are in a position of authority, whether whether you are you, you, you are placed above older people in the church, what must you be? What what must be expected of you? you? You have to remember that you are in that position by grace. Not not because you are better than anybody else, but God put you in that position like 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 a, a, a God put a Timothy above all the elders in the church. But they said, when you are in that position, that you must, you must be referenced, that is, you must, you must have respect, you must have show integrity, you must let your yes be yes, your what be your, your no be no, then your sound speech, your sound speech that cannot be condemned. In other words, you, don't, you must not be reckless in your statement, because one thing you have to remember is that not everybody is your friend. And there must be antagonists because of your age, because of uh, uh, resentment. So, so, so that's what they say. You have to be very, very careful if you are young and you are in a position of authority over the older people. That that they, a lot of people we want to test your integrity. They want to test your knowledge. They want to test who you are. What qualifies you to be over them? So that's what you have, you have to be very, very careful so that you will not be faulted. That is, you will not be ashamed, having nothing evil to say. Nobody will have any evil thing to say about you. It is very, very difficult. But, but with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do it. Because one thing is, uh, you did not appoint yourself there. They put you there. So then the second point is, just as Paul said to use him as a real world example of Jesus' character, the older men should be able to provide the same type of godly example as Paul. To the young men. So what the Apostle Paul is saying here is that he, he is not asking the younger men to follow his own uh, personal example, but that but that he is copying Jesus Christ, and so they must also be able to see Jesus Christ in him. So 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 that, so that we men we men we we owe that responsibility to the to the youths. We owe that responsibility to the church, to our own family. 
to live in such a way that they will be able to see Jesus Christ in us. And, and if, if you're going to make a quick reference, he said, 1 Corinthians 4, 16. He said, therefore, I urge you, imitate me, that is, copy me. And, and, if, and, and before you can say, copy me or imitate me, you must be able to know yourself that you are living a godly life. You are not a drunkard. You are not a liar. You are not a cheat. You are not a, 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 an, adult, a, an, an adulterer. You are not a fornicator. And, and that is the, the time you can be bold enough to quote that First Corinthians 4, 16. To say, therefore, I urge you, imitate me. Or First or, or Corinthians 11, 1. Imitate me, just I also imitate Christ. Imitate me, just as I also imitate Christ. So that, so that we must, he's telling us that we must, of a must, imitate Christ. I, it is when we are dwelling in Christ that we can now advise the young people coming after us to imitate us. Then, then the, the next one said, most men learn how to be a man from their father. What happens when the father isn't around? What happens if the father is an antichrist or blasphemes God? What happens if the father pretends to be a Christian but acts much differently? Now, it said, most men learn to be a man from their, from their father. Now, I'm, I'm, this one, I'm just going to have to ask this way a question. Now, if you are, if you are, uh, if you have a father that is an antichrist, or if you have a father that blasphemed God, and, 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 and you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what do you do? Do you, do you see, have to learn from, what, what, do you have to rebuke him or you have to learn from him? I just want somebody to answer that one quickly before we jump to the next one if you are if you are because i, I ever have seen a, a, a situation where the father is an, uh, an under christ and, and the children the, the children uh, 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 have already uh, uh, embraced christianity they, they have already started learning about jesus christ so in a situation like that what do what, how do you expect the children to behave what do what, what how do you think they should do can somebody just quickly answer that one? Well, uh, but the lack of just as you say, yeah. No matter what, as a young man, you are not supposed to rebuke the older men. No. But you must respect them. That's right. If you have a young man having to have a father who blasphemed according to your question, yet it will still be okay. So, which means that through your own attitude, it is possible that your father will be able to, to say, ah, there is something good about this boy, maybe because he's a Christian. So, 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 so that, uh, uh huh, uh, abuse, that is fine, that is fine. Then the next one is, uh, how will a man learn a mature godliness without the seasoned men in their church to impart wisdom and life lesson. Now, how, how will a man learn a mature godliness without assisting men? In, in other words, what is, the, the, is asking now is that, is there any other way that, that men can learn to be godly if we don't have seasoned men in the church or, or to impact, to, to, to give us wisdom and, and, and lessons. Is it possible at all? 
So, so in other words, can, can somebody develop a, a, a godliness with, without without the influence of people around him, without the influence of somebody to guide him? This is um, yeah. So yeah, so it's still possible for okay. someone to uh, develop godliness um, even without. Um, it's the word by studying the word. Okay. Uh, of course, it will be a challenge because um, we, when we go to school, we go to school because we want to be taught by someone who. Who has experienced what we want to learn. So likewise, when you are um, following Christ, you want to learn from someone who has experienced Christ, who has you know, studied the Word, who yes, can guide you, who has experienced, who um, is no longer chewing, you know, drinking milk, but uh, you know can handle the tough stuff. So. They can guide you, but uh, of course, if you don't have that, then you have the word and study the word, and Christ, the Holy Spirit, will guide you. As Thank to you. How you can handle yourself. Thank you, and that reminds me, as you have said, the word the, that a lot of people that that are uh, stranded in Africa, in China in Indonesia that they've never heard about Jesus Christ before. But because the missionaries were able to smuggle the Holy Bibles into all this area, so then they said reading the Bible alone converted them into Christianity. That, that because they just couldn't believe, because if you remember in, in, in the uh, early, early, early uh, days of uh, Henry VIII, Henry VIII James, the, all the Bible we are we are we are not uh, 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 translated into English. They were all, all translated into Greek or Latin. They were the exclusive privilege of the of the bishop of the of the priest. And it was Tin Day and uh, uh, Luther and all these people that that interpreted the Bible to English, so that so that the commoners can also have access to the Bible. Because in those days, nobody could even, it's a, it's a blasphemy or a heresy for, for any commoner to recite the, the, the Lost Prayer or, or, or Psalm 23. But when the Bible now became translated into English, it became uh, available to all the people. And a lot of people came into Christianity because they were able to read the Bible. So, so, so that which means that uh, when, when, when our main ministry really gets organized, one of our main functions will be how we can get as much Bibles as possible to send overseas to help the people who have not got seasoned men in their church to impart wisdom and life lesson on the belief that that Bible alone, which is what Edda uh, uh, um, Usman said, the word, reading the word alone is sufficient for them. Unfortunately for us, the Bible has been, in, has been uh, translated virtually into every language of the world now. So that's why so there's no country we want to send this Bible to in their language that we cannot get, get, get them printed for us. So then we go to the next one, which is number three. Men, men do Yeah? <coughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's right.
yo hace dans les nouveaux Si il lâche un village, il lâche dans le bois pour le village, pour lui mettre en tour de la reine. So it's important for you, for, for a young man to always have a mentor. When we are coming like from Bible school, we have some spiritual person we connect with. That's right. That we talk, that we pray together. Older person who have been in the ministry for a while, a spiritual person, you know, and then we have that spiritual emphasis time, every time, you know, to grow in faith. So it's always important, you know, to, to, to have that spiritual method into your life. Amen. Thank God you, Sir. Thank you. So we go to the number three, which is men don't like to admit need for help. <laughs> this is very interesting. We are so proud, uh, and um, we, we don't always want to admit that we really need help. Mm -hmm. One, he said, how often do men pretend to have everything together while their life spirals out of control a lot of people they, they hardly admit that problem for them and, and, and when they could not handle it they they, they, they just uh, backslide from the church they are going through problem but instead of uh, coming to their fellow a uh, christian brother to say my marriage is is on the rock or um, i don't i cannot even get even with my life uh, can you pray for me can you do this can you help me so so now, how often do men pretend to have everything together while their life spirals out of control? This is one, this is one area in, in, in where we must never assume that it is all right for everybody because a, a, a cloak does not make a monk. Well, it doesn't mean that if the man is well dressed and is smiling, everything is all right for him. But as soon as you notice that something is wrong, approach that person in, in such a brotherly way. Are you okay? Is everything all right? You know, share, try, try as much to get close to that person and you'll be able to, able to, to uh, concern. Because some, sometimes a lot of people don't even want to share their problem with anybody at all. Because they are afraid that if I, if, if, if I let them know my secret, everything is going to blow all, all over the whole church. So this is one area in which we must see all ourselves as our brother's keeper. Everybody is a counselor in the church. Everybody is a chaplain. And if your brother confides in you, try as much as possible to keep it to yourself. Find a way to, to help the person. If you cannot help him, consult somebody else. So, so, so because men, men especially, they don't want to share their problems with anybody at all. And then number two say, how easy is it for us to put on a spiritual our spiritual leader mask and head to church once a week while we secretly question the truth and foster our desire to live as successful American men? And this is very, very common in America here. The 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 on Sunday they are the, the most pious men on Sunday. But, but, but during the week, they are the businessmen that has no morality in business at all. They are the type of people that, they, they, especially the, the white uh, evangel evangelicals, they go to church, they preach the Bible, they take communion, they, they, they tell you what to do, what the Bible is saying, but, but they are the Pharisee. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are the type of people that Jesus described as the whitest sepulchre that they are just like grave, graveyard, in which everything is painted white. But, but, but when you dig the grave, what you see there, you see corruption. So that's so that these are the people that they, they, they put on the, the spiritual leader mask and head to church once a week. When you see them in the church, you, you think they are pious men. But, but, what, but then, then, then you have to question the truth. Then they question the truth about them. Say, how foster the desire as a successful American man Successful American men means that you have to trot on everybody as you get on is, is, is pure capitalism. So, 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 so that is what he's saying, that we must not be like them. That whatever we do, whether in our business world, 
in our Christian life, we must be able, able to, to reflect Jesus Christ's character in everything that we do. And then the next one is said, if we are involved in men's ministry and actually listen to and engage honestly with brothers and exhibit no judgment, we will become safe in our fellow men's eyes. So, uh, so, so it, it, this, this is guiding us into how we can be, be, be accepted because every, every man fears rejection. But how can we become safe in our fellow men's eyes? And that is, that is if, we are, if we are able to be a good listener and we engage honestly with brothers and we exhibit no judgment. So in other words, what he's saying, he is going back again that do not judge. That 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 um, what, what he is telling us that we, we we before we can plug out the the splint in our brother's eyes, we must be able to remove the, the log of wood in our own eye first. So 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 that so that so that we must not be judgmental. We must not arrogate ourselves as a judge, as a, as a, as, as a, uh, a, 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 a lawyer, a judge, an executioner, that we must be able, that Jesus Christ, if you want us, that do not judge, that for whatever measure that you judge, or whether you too you be, you be, you be judged. But he does not say that we must not rebuke. He does not say that we must not exhaust. He must not say that we must not encourage. But we must not be judgmental. By being judgmental means that you pick on everything. You don't see any good thing in anybody. But when you see something, you can still rebuke because it's your responsibility to rebuke. But when you rebuke, you rebuke with love. You are rebuking because you, you love that person. You want to change that person's life to a better thing. That is why you are rebuking. You are, you are not rebuking to put that person down. So, so that is what the, 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 uh, we have been taught here. And then, then men, number four, men need accountability. And that is missing in the world today, accountability. And under that accountability, it's like most Christian men are obsessed with exuding the image of godliness. With an almost sociopathic ability, we turn on the charm and throw the Christian booze words into our vernacular with an attempt to seem beyond reproach. And these are the typical examples that we have been seeing also among, among, among um, many, many uh, Pentecostal people today. See, we are, we are, we, 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 it is very, very difficult to, 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 to live a godly life. Because, because when you live a godly life, you, you 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 start. You, sometimes you, you look like a fool. Sometimes you look like like a, a like a, a, a coward. And the, 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 because because one thing it, it's a, a some people they, they used to ask a question that what did, did Jesus mean when he said that when when they slap you on the right uh, um, cheek, turn the right cheek. What did Jesus What did Jesus mean? When say if they slap you on the right cheek, turn the turn the left cheek. If you are you are you really to do that if they slap you? Oh, what what is what is the principle? What is the what is the moral principle that the Lord is trying to teach us here? Because if they said if the, the man asks you to go one mile, go two miles with him. If the man asks you to to, to 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 bring out your cloak, remove your pants too. Are you to do that? No. No. So what is what what is the Lord trying to teach us there? Allow somebody to break you in the court. 
No. Avoid. You, you walk away. That that would be stupidity, won't it? Yeah. But how do you, how do you deal with bully? How do you, uh, if, if your if your own son comes to you that somebody has been, that the, uh, another boy has been bullying him in the school? And and, he, and and because you, you you have already told him you must not fight, you must not fight, you must not fight, just walk away. So now it got to a state now that they are even punching him, throw throw his books on the ground, and trample on his on his books. What do you do? Well, how do you advise that, that kind of a, 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 a child to do? Yeah. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yeah, but what, what, what I wanted to, to ask Dr. Lambo, I know we want to go faster in that. You know, we talk about accountability, yeah. which is very important. For me, I, I really grew up in a, a family support, and it's, it's a very serious issue in the family of God church. Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, it's very correct because one thing it, it's um, yeah. That's what, right. What makes it That's right. That's right. That is true. Yeah. 
recorded you, this is not in the essence where you are dead, no, you, you are now formal. That's a true. That is true. Must be uh, definitely accountability is very important. It is very, 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 very important because it shows integrity. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Then we move on. He said, How many men do you know of that leave church on Sunday and go to beer at home watching the NFL? Well, um. The question that we want to ask here, is it a crime to, to drink beer or wine? Because one thing is, is this is this is very serious because um, uh, drinking beer, not, not I, I, I don't want to say takes little for their stomach sick because, because Apostle Paul could, said that one to Timothy uh, for medicinal purposes. Not, not because, not, not because Timothy is a drunkard or Timothy likes to drink. Aha, uh -huh. but, but gozu beer at home, not, not gozu beer at church, but gozu, gozu beer at home while watching the NFL. So does a glass of beer take it to to hell after church service? Because one thing, one thing is you take this, this one to a, a, a Protestant or a Catholic or anywhere, they just think, what, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, no, because even a lot of people in America today that uh, any church, uh, 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 apart from Manzion that I know, they don't see anything wrong in drinking beer. So what, what is your own intake in this one? Because if you say don't take, you say you may say beer is in, is, is 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 intoxicating, but there's some wine too that are very intoxicating, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so, uh, is, it, is it safe to say I'm not I'm not advocating to drink beer because I I, I mean I've already left beer more than uh, uh, fifteen years ago, but 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 um, do you see anything wrong in it? Yes, sir. Um, so it, it depends on the motive. That's now, right. You can go either way on this. It's a very uh, interesting topic. Now, the motive. Now, um, for some of us that are clinicians, we do have a lot of medication that contains a lot of alcohol in it. Yeah. That um, we know that the patient takes and they drink the medication, but that's the composition of the medication. That's right. You cannot remove that aspect of it. It makes the medication less effective. So the patient drink, drink that for the cure. And um, you have uh, people who drink um, as part of the, you know, the, the drink of you know, glass of wine as part of their meal. That's right. To, um, um, I mean, for health, you know, yeah. um, purposes. Um, yeah. the, the intent is not to drink it and feel, you know, drunk or whatever. That's so right. So, for me, it, it's, um, it, because, again, the Bible, what does the Bible say? It, it, you're not supposed to drink that will alter your countenance, you know, your spiritual, you, yeah. You know, don't know yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you cannot control yourself. Now, it, it, it becomes now a very touchy issue. Where do you draw the line? That's right. Right. You see? So, so that's why um, for most people, they say, they don't just do it because, um, you know, <laughs> You don't know where the line is, <laughs> you see. But for a lot of Christians who will drink wine, especially wine, um, they will say it's um, it's healthy for me. It's good for me. It's good for my 
my, my you know, my body, my health. So I drink a glass of wine. Some cook when they make food, they use wine. That's right. Red wine to prepare meal, restaurant, you know, we fry certain things with red wine. Um, so, I mean, for me, that's where I, I kind of run on that. I, I mean, I'm not a drinker, but, I'm, you know. Because, because uh, that is true, sir. Yeah, so carry on. That's right. Okay. You say, okay, I'll drink one glass, I'll drink one glass today. The next day you're going to drink two. The following day you're going to drink three. And then you might be going further and further and further. So in and other words, you, you must be temperate in, in whatever you do. Okay, don't, that's right. Don't do it at all. Don't do it. If you cannot control it, don't do it at all. All right? Yeah, thank you so much. Then number three, is said, how many men do you know that have separate groups of friends? Church guys and, and the good old boys, depending on the type of activity involved. And then we know that one. And, and uh, maybe uh, it's only very few in America today that even have time for, for keeping friends, really. Because the schedule of work, activities, and family, it, it is this one in Africa, mm -hmm. they can have friends. Because uh, you, you, in Africa, you can have uh, about three or four d different groups of friends. You know, the church the church goers, and then, then the old boys, uh, uh, and then, then the, the party boys. And <laughs> so, so everything depends. So then, uh, how many men? <laughs> so they say, how many men do you know who have come close to or even uh, proceeded with divorce due to loss of the eyes and the flesh. Where well, that one, that that one, um, that's nothing we can do because one thing is in America today, everybody mind their own business, and and and, and uh, if, if 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 there's anyone, you are not to to query or to question anybody's way of life, except that if you feel that. Uh, their way of life may corrupt you or not compatible with you, then you don't have to move with such a person. That is all. Then he said, if we are not real with our fellow men, admit our own mistake and failure, and use the lessons that God has taught us, and testify to the works He has performed in our lives. Any lesson we attempt to give will seem disingenuous. There's a reason why God doesn't let you forget the past. It's his greatest glory to be honored and thanked for relying on his strength when we are at our weakest. He uses the words of us to prove that no man is beyond redemption. So in other words, what, is the, 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 what we are now saying is that we must never be ashamed of our past. Our past was deliberate so as to model our future. But the greatest mistake we can make is to go back to our past. It's like a dog eat, uh, uh, going back to eat his own vomit. And we must use our past experience how we were able to evolve from our past to where we are today as a lesson, as wisdom to, to guide other people coming or other people that may be 
<clears throat> in, in, in that situation where they are struggling for involvement. So that, so, that, so that all of us have gone through series of our past failures, past week, but and, and that is what the author is saying, that God uses it to prove that we are not perfect, that we need him till the day, till the day we die, we need God in our life. Because till the day we die, we continue to struggle to reach the to reach that we can ne we never never reach that st stage of perfection in our life, but but there's nothing wrong in us continuing to the last breath, struggling to 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 attain perfection, and all the past experiences are lessons for us. So that so that so that so that we, we don't go back to the past, but we remember the past to to, to shape the future, and then to use our past experience to lead other people to, to God. And then the last one said the defensive barriers of American masculinity can only be broken if the first step of humble and sincere honesty starts with our own bravery in Christ. We must first move past the shame of our past activities and be ready to counsel those about to make the same mistake. Now, the barriers of American masculinity is that Donald Trump said, don't wear a mask and you are ashamed to wear a mask because he does, because you look like a masquerade, you look like a, like, like a, 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 a missy, and you look like a weak, you look like a weakling. So, 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 and, and this thing is killing everybody, both right and left. Coronavirus is killing people. But you see, he insists that no, if I cannot put on mask in the, because before, it took me, it took me some time before I could admit myself that I can wear a mask outside. Because I feel that I look, I, I, because I feel I look ridiculous in it. But when I saw people die both right and left, and I, I know that there's no bed in the hospital for old men, I had to start using masks by force. And I didn't feel ashamed, I didn't feel ashamed again to wear a mask because I don't want to die now. So, 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 so that the defensive barrier of our American masculinity can only be broken if the first step of humble and sincere honesty starts with our own bravery in Christ. And what does that mean? We must not be ashamed in Christ. We must not be ashamed because because Christ is Jesus Christ is humble, even on or to death. Yes, sir, I'm listening to you. That's right. That's right. So a lot of people have been dead. A lot of people are dying every day. Because they want to be an American masculinity. Uh, American masculinity means me, 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 means that uh, you are not what you are. People are riding Osmobile. You too, you want to, to ride. Uh, 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 um, um, you want to ride Chevrolet, and, and, and then you, your credit card continue from one to two to, to, to ten credit cards. Because you want to be an American masculinity, you want to go on holiday, you want to go diving, you want to go canoeing, you want to go this, you want to go so, so that you continue to accumulate debts. Uh, and, and then you put on one job, two jobs, three. The, the, a lot of people are now doing three jobs together. Just killing themselves. So that is what is now telling us that we must be able to imbibe Jesus Christ in our life. Humility. Be content with what you have. Be grateful to God for what He has given you. And, and, and make the best use of what you... Because if I cannot get what I want, I will make the best use of what I have. And that is humility. So that is what the author is telling us here. So, 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 that, so that we must never be like them. And then, number, then we go to number five. He said, men need reaction. Yes, sir. The American dream is to struggle to be, to live a good life, to, to pursue happiness, to pursue freedom and happiness. And, and in pursuing it, you never get satisfied, you want more. The more you get, the more you want. The more you get, the more you want. And then you have to change your car every two, two years. 
Every time. They, uh, look at my oh, look at my 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 my, my Rolls Royce now. It was given to me in 2016. <laughs> I can't I can't even say I can't even say I'm I'm, I'm running into water. You know, no petrol, only water, and it's still going very strong. Eh? You know, and I'm not ashamed to, I'm not ashamed to, 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 to write it. Yeah? That's right. You don't have to, you don't have to rock, and, you know. No. That's right. Because we don't want to stand there and say, okay, yeah, because I am American. What we want to say is that we will be working until we will forget Christ. That's right. They didn't hear by the way. You know. So that's what I asked the question what is the American dream? And then you said, what's the happiness? Yes, too. that is true because American dream does not bring Jesus Christ into your life at all. No, 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 it doesn't include Jesus Christ in your life. American dream is purely, purely on uh, uh, um, being, being successful financially. Yeah. 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 You 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 must you 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 must measure up to the society. You must you, you must you, you must retain your status quo. Of course not. You can't not. You just cannot. No, it's not possible. You have to hate one and love the other one. Mm hmm. That is not possible, no. Mm, amen. Any, any question? So, uh, is there any question before we, we, we stop today? Then we, we start from um, number five uh, next Monday by the grace of God. Any question? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why is it true that men don't like to admit, but still, that people around you will know that there is a problem? Yeah. But, mm, there are so many factors that are responsible yeah, for other, that. The, 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 the other men around in such a situation. Yeah. That is, you can you can help them if they ask for help. If they don't ask for help or they don't complain that they need help, you, you cannot you can you can't help them. You, you you have to ask before because they say, ask you be given, seek you will find, knock the door will be open, and then he went further. He said those that ask they get, and only those that seek find. So if, if, you, if you don't knock, if you don't knock my door for help, you, I cannot know that you need help. That's right. So in this situation now, you who, once they don't ask, one of the things that have to be said, in most cases, you know, it, it began to be like a talking point among people. You know, and when such a thing starts to go, I don't think that should be our position. That's what you say. 
Yeah, and, and, and this is where fellowship comes in. That's right. Uh, this is where fellowship of men ministry comes into play. We have to create an enabling environment in which we see one another as our brother's keeper. And, and it will now give everybody the courage to be able to confide, to be able to say, I need something. But when, when everybody is afraid of being mocked, when everybody is afraid of, of, of being spied, or, or slighted, then, 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 then the people will just say, ah, I, 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 I cannot let them know that I need problem, that I have problem. Because honestly, I'm telling you honestly, a lot of people need help, but they, they, they are not, they are ashamed to say it out. And because the fear is, the lamp of the fear is, when they tell you, you know, instead of shopping and praying with the person, that's right. That's right. And that is and that is what we and that is what we have to erase in main ministry. We have to work on that one particular one. Yeah. We have to create an environment where people can talk their problems with with assurance that they will get answer for it. Thank you so much. Any other question? Okay, another question, Pastor Lamo, I wrote it down. Yeah. They have the two levels, the older man and the younger man. Yeah. Now, for example, in the ministry, you know, the ministry is established with, uh, with Somali, we established the ministry. They are of age. Yeah. So, when is it time to say, look, young man, it's about time for you to take over? Or when does the young man say it's about time? You know, I mean, what what what, what happened between them? Yes. So as the people took, you know, the ministry over to their children or somebody at a certain point, when, at what point? Yes. Uh, Jesus Christ also, yeah, Jesus Christ gave us that example. When after his disciples have followed him for three years and remained uh, uh, only six months for him to go, he called them uh, and then uh, 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 peered them in two, 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 two and sent them out. He empowered them, he gave them authority over demons over everything and then he gave them instruction that any 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 city you enter if they are, uh, uh, entertain you you stay there but if they refuse you do not fight them just go away and shake the dust of your feet let let let, let their problem he said it's better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that city and the reason now and then also the 70 he sent them out to 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 also so in other words when they came back they gave report with joy and and, and so so and the, the purpose of it is to, to to sort of test them if they are ready now to to, to take leadership uh, role if they are ready now to take over his ministry so the main ministry must be able or the older men must be able to give the younger men opportunity to excel themselves they must be giving right. the younger men opportunity to to to, re, to find out which area their 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 gifts their calling are. Because if you don't give them, if if you don't if you don't dictate their calling for them, you you create the environment for them to discover who they are right. through different right. different different activities in the church. And we thank God that our general vice chair is doing that thing. And that is by using, by giving every, everybody opportunity to come to Bible study and teach, by giving everybody opportunity on Sunday school to, to, to teach on Sunday school. 
but but at the moment it just restricted to the elders and the, and the, and maybe yeah, next year to Dickens too. Uh, Dickens will also be able to participate in Sunday Sunday school. So that is an opportunity to groom them. But we are, can also do that in the in the young adult ministry, in which we will have a, a, a group together and and give a topic for one of the youth or two of the youth to develop it for us and 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 then uh, uh, explain it to us. So so the, so that those are all the things that we have not done yet. But those are the things that we have to be doing in the youth ministry and the young adult ministry, where we have small groups and we give topic to each leader of that small group to develop and, and then to, to, to teach them. It's been done in Baptist in, in all, all these Baptist institutions, but, but we have not started it in Manzalan Fellowship Church, but we have to start it next year. So and that is the only way in which we, we, we can start developing them from youth to younger. By the time they get to young adult, by the time they are maturing into adult, they already have that confidence to be able to face the crowd. They, be, they, are, they, are, they, are, they have the confidence to be able to, to say something about the Bible. A lot of people, a lot of old men in the Bible, in, in, in the main ministry, they don't even know 50% of what is in the Bible. They don't know at all. Yeah. You know, in our assembly of God church, it was, I just give you the example because I've seen all these things happen. Yeah. You know, the, the older men, that's part of the fact that the youth or the young men were ready to take over the church. That's right. The older men, were, they were not prepared to turn the church over. Which is wrong, which is very wrong. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> that is fear. That that no, is that is no, fear. That is true. It's fear, 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 of, fear of rejection. Yeah. Uh, it is true. It is fear of rejection. That is true. That is true. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any other question before we go? Hello, Bank. Pastor Waka, take a camera. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, Canada or Bank, uh, close us in prayer. Another 
bringing one person on board at a time. Father, so continue to empower the men's ministry because the church depends on the men's ministry. We thank you and bless your holy name. Father, so I pray next next Monday night that will be bigger than this. The attendance will be bigger. The teaching will be exciting. More contributions. And, and that makes the whole thing great. We thank you for all what you have done for Mount Zion Fellowship Church. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray tonight. Amen. 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 Thank you so much.